Carson Bretsky joins us now. He is Chief Economist at ING. Carson, thank you so much for speaking to us today. In terms of what we're expecting from Bernanke, it seems that there's a real dichotomy between what the markets are hoping for, QE3, whether it be, be it with a twist or, or, you know, the plain QE3, and what economists seem to think. Do you think there's a case of to, for Bernanke to put extra quantitative easing out there? Of course, there is a case because we, we see that the, especially the American economy is, is very sluggish and it is again um, maybe at the brink of a recession, so which means which asks for more, more stimulus. More stimulus cannot come from, from the government right now, so monetary policy is the only two left you got there to, to get another boost to the American economy. But Carson, I guess you know, the point is that, of course, in QE2, inflation was nowhere near what we're seeing now. In fact, at the time, we were worried about deflation, so there was a real case for the necessity for QE2 now isn't the case and actually now what we're seeing is that also QE2 in some cases just didn't work. That's, that's the thing. Um, the, the, the big question is here whether really monetary policy can, can solve the, the structural problems, the, the fundamental problems of an economy. I would, I would be doubtful. So it can kind of give a, give a kick, can give a kick start to the economy, but it cannot solve the fundamental adjustment that the American economy has to go through. But so do you believe that Mr. Ben Bernanke will be bold today and actually announce something? Does he have any choice but to announce something because otherwise markets will tank? I think that he will probably announce something. I think it's hard to retell what he's going to announce. I think he's going to give markets at least something. Um, in terms of what we're seeing here in Europe as well, Carson, things are not going well. I mean, we're so focused on Ben Bernanke that we sometimes forget, of course, what we saw on the Greek bond yields yesterday. <clears throat> a new record a talk about a possible, you know, necessity for a further bailout. How concerned are you? I know <clears throat> we talk, <clears throat> apologies, about this very often. Um, I'm, I'm very concerned here because we see that there is almost a kind of cacophony of, of, of policy makers. Um, just remember a couple of weeks ago everyone was saying yes we have a deal now it's about a swift implementation of the deal. Uh, now just last week we see all of a sudden there is a collateral issue coming up again and this casts doubt whether uh, actually the Eurozone leaders are able and are willing to solve the Greek crisis and I think doubt and uncertainty right now is, is, is poisoning for the, for the Greek. Yeah, and you talk very clearly there about whether governments are willing and able. I mean, if they're not willing, yields surging higher must be a wake-up call for these guys. Will the ECB continue buying bonds or do they just need to leave it for a while until governments realize what they have on their hands? It's, it's, it's hard to tell, I think, for, especially right now. In the Greek case is, is a separate one. I think here it, it doesn't make sense for the ECB to, to step up buying bonds. Um, really, politicians have to solve the Greek problem. But, of course, it goes beyond the Greek problem because it goes um, to countries like Spain, like Italy. And, and in here, I think the ECB might is forced right now to continue purchasing because politicians are not able to really to get their act together and come out with a clear statement and actually live up to the statement. And Carson, talk to me about the short ban on the, the short selling ban that was imposed yesterday for another 30 days. A lot of investors say this just skews the market. So when we go back to normality, it's going to be very difficult for investors to see exactly where we're at. Are you for or against it? <laughs> I think right now it's, 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 it's a good thing for, for policymakers to, to implement. Um, it, it, it shows really to, to get the, the speculative amend, uh, element out of markets. So I think this is something that shows that policymakers can take action. Um, I, I don't think that it's a, a solution for the long term, but in the short term, I think it was a good step to do. All right, Carson, a pleasure to speak to you, Carson Bretsky there.